this is a bit of a debate and has already been mentioned a few times in the discussion. Uh, and I have a poll question uh, that we could start with. And so it's going to talk about uh, proton radiation for color sarcomas in the petroclival uh, area. And this is a presentation again on behalf of the whole group. And of course the people involved are much larger, but it's very important to realize that also the radiation oncologists are involved in this. Um, could we have the poll question now, please? So the question is, in your practice, do you give every patient a petrochival chondrosarcoma with a grade two, so it's either grade one or grade two, post-operative proton radiation? Um, so the uh, MD Anderson uh, just published their, their historic data showing that scobus uh, chondrosarcomas are actually quite a bad disease. So this is a, an overview of sarcomas, and the green line is the chondrosarcoma. And as you can see, both overall survival and progression-free survival uh, are not great and not very different from the others. However, as they uh, describe in their publication that there are advances in surgical technique and reconstruction. Clearly, we're talking about the endoscopy. Uh, and this is redefining uh, the management of primary bone. So this is very interesting. 60% would do uh, radiation and 40% not. Well, thank you for that. That is very interesting because uh, it is standard of care, okay? Standard of care is resection and uh, radiation, uh, pro particularly proton radiation uh, for chondrosarcomas. So it's interesting to hear that 40% is, is not doing that at the moment. So uh, the other thing is, so it's not only, you know, not a great disease, perhaps even a bad disease, proton radiation is very effective. Mind you, the tumor is not so radiosensitive, so you need this very large dose of 70 gray or above. Uh, but then you have great results. You have a 49% of local uh, control rate, and your five-year overall survival is above 90%. So residual volume is important, and they have a cutoff here of 120 cc's with, with to improve if, if you have more tumor left. The, the dose is important. so. It, you need to have a homogeneous uh, radiation field and you need to be above the 70 grade level, but it's very effective. So why not give it uh, to any, everybody? And as we just saw, we're clearly not doing that. Well, um, chondrosarcomas do not metastasize. And chondrosarcomas grow gradually, very slowly, the grade ones and the grade two. It's not a chordoma. The chordomas do more poorly. It's not a spinal chondrosarcomas. The, the spinal chondrosarcomas uh, do worse. They're more aggressive. They metastasize. So we're really talking about local recurrences. This is what we're talking about. So a few cases to illustrate. Case one, this is a 76-year-old person who had some facial uh, complaints, but intermittent six palsy. Uh, and also he has a tumor that is growing. It's on the left side. It's in the carefully sinus macro cage area, but it's growing down in the petroclyphal synchondrosis. It's uh, encasing the carotid artery. It's bright on a T2. It's all the way down here to the uh, internal auditory canal. So this is most likely a chondrosarcoma. We did the surgery. Now in surgery, uh, there's many things to consider. Uh, and we could talk about this for a whole day, I think, if we had the time. Um, but mainly what I want to uh, focus on is, uh, is all about the carotid artery. And so there's many ways of identifying the carotid artery, and you're familiar with the tibia nerve and the station tube and, and you know, removing the torus to barriers and uh, opening up the foramen lacerum. Um, and, and this is really something uh, you have to do if you want to do a good resection of these tumors. And again, this is a, a fabulous topic to talk about and show you surgical videos of. But I just want to focus on that it is about the carotid and mobilizing the carotid to allow you to get access to the, to the area where the tumor is. This particular patient did really well. This is the post-op MRI showing the enhancement of the flap and the carotid that was liberated basically out of the tumor and the bone around it was drilled. He had proton radiation afterwards, and now we're a few years later, uh, and he's doing, he's doing well, but um, he has some history, some memory issues due to 
radiation necrosis of the temporal lobe. Um, so this is just an illustration that this high dose that is giving, being given in this area around the carotid artery uh, is also covering the temporal lobe, which is, a, which is a very important area for your memory. Let's move on to the next case. Uh, this is an older lady. Uh, she had uh, six nerve palsy. She has this really smaller uh, fungal sarcoma on the left side. We did a surgery in 2015. Her palsy resolved. We gave her radiation, uh, proton radiation, and she had a very severe uh, memory loss. And she was a journalist. And as a journalist, she couldn't function anymore. And, and she was really handicapped about this. And then at one moment she came in with an epistaxis and uh, unfortunately she had a very quick uh, second epistaxis which proved to be fatal. And we believe that was due to the carotid blowout where the carotid has been in the surgical field or in the, in the radiation field and had the full dose as well. Of course the carotid was covered by a good layer of mucoseptal flap and uh, we had her in uh, regularly to, to look endoscopically at the reconstruction and that seemed to be vital, but still did not prevent this, uh, this catastrophe. Um, and this is just showing her the, uh, the radiation, radiation uh, necrosis here on this side. And then a final case, this is a case uh, showing you um, a tumor, a clival tumor, uh, and this is a chordoma, uh, and just showing you that uh, chordomas get radiation necrosis as well. And I, we have a, a multiple cases of this. So this is the French experience. Uh, the French uh, in Paris, they have experience and published on uh, the strategy of doing surgery alone uh, compares to surgery and proton. And there's no really difference in overall survival. There is uh, a difference in progression free survival and one third of the patients get a uh, local recurrence. So proton beam again, really works. Uh, but 18% of their cases had radiation necrosis. So uh, protobin works, but at a, uh, at a price. So this is our kind of experience now. What we try to do is really go for near total resection. We, we're really being uh, very uh, aggressive, uh, but safe. Uh, if we have a, a, a good a resection with minimal residual, We'll discuss with the patient a way to scan policy. Obviously, standard of care is radiation, but uh, we'll, we'll discuss the option of doing a weight scan. And if there's local recurrence, we'll do either a surgery or a radiation or do a combination of both. Thanks, Walter. Fantastic. So I think, I think a really interesting poll uh, outcome there. 40% um, of people. Unexpected, eh? very unexpected. Um, so that, that's, that's interesting. Um, maybe I'll just bring in uh, from the panel, um, Sean. Yeah. What you, what's your approach to grade one, two chondrosarcoma? Do, do you irradiate up front or do you, do you watch and wait? Sure, I'm actually going to cover this in my talk, but just sort of a brief overview. You know, you know, for the conventional grade one chondrosarcs, we just observe them. And what you find is that their median progression-free survival, they can go 12, 13 years without any progression. The uh, grade two chondrosarcs, we've looked at them. Uh, after a subtotal resection, there's a clear benefit to radiation. After a gross total resection, the, the benefit with radiation actually disappears for the conventional grade twos. And so if I've got an R0, R1 resection for a conventional grade two chondrosarc, uh, I tend to observe them because of the concerns regarding radiation complications. And then the conventional grade threes, they get radiation adjuvant uh, regardless of extent of resection. Okay, great, thanks. And Paul? What's your approach in, in Pittsburgh to the grade one, two chondrosarcoma? I'll present a brief uh, information on it, but um, grade one and two, I treat pretty similarly where uh, if there's residual for a grade two, um, if I know what the clinical uh, progression is, then I might treat if it's progressed. Otherwise, I even with a small residual, I'll tend to observe. And certainly with gross total resection, I don't radiate either grade one or grade two. Right. So it's not been published a lot about this, but I think it would be very good if we if we would you know publish a bit more about this because it's uh it's clearly the practice now. Yeah. The chondrosarcoma is very different than chordoma. It is. Yeah. Totally. But there is also clearly a subset of chondrosarcoma, regardless of grade, that 
is more aggressive. And yeah. that's the, the trick is finding that. It's almost the inverse of Cordoma. I agree. And, I'm, and I don't think there's any way of identifying at the moment that that group of chondrosarcomas that turn out to be really aggressive um, and amongst the most challenging.